one van, two guys, seven days, and 22 of the UK's most popular species of fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, fish on. Big one. On. Oh, no. ah. <gasps> I don't like it. What are we doing? Yes! Welcome to my seven day multi species challenge. Yes, fish on. We've done it. Oh, and it's not a small one either. You won't ever see me celebrate a bream like that ever again. The concept of the challenge was simple. My friend Cal and I had seven days to catch all of the main species listed in my book, The Simple Fishing Guide, a lifetime's worth of captures that we needed to land all within one week. We started close to home on a small lake where I first properly got into fishing. It felt right that we started this crazy journey here. And the timer starts now. We have seven days to catch all of the species. And I've had a bite. Maybe not as big as a perch that I might have dreamed of last night, but still a perch. Species number one. There's something I love about watching a float, and fishing with a small hook means you're never quite sure what the next fish could be. Cruising. Yes, new species. That was going to be quite a hard one as well. On most other places, that was going to be a challenge. I'm cruising. With all the craze of chasing after bigger and better fish, Hi guys. it's often easy to forget where we first started. And it was this very lake where I learned the fundamentals of fishing, mentored by a man named Roger, who organized the junior fishing competitions. Sadly, he couldn't join me for the start of this challenge as he was in hospital recovering from a stroke he had suffered the day before. But I'll forever be grateful for the patience and kindness he showed me all those years ago. Guess what? It's another species. Gudgeon. Well, this one brings me back to the early days of fishing on this lake. I think I'm gonna devote this one to you, Roger. I hope you're doing well, man. Thanks for the inspiration and the help back in the day. Now I really needed to get on the move and try some other locations, but I hadn't yet caught a roach or a tench. Another cruise. They're getting bigger, but I can't find a tench. Oh. Oh. I bet that was a tench. Oh, that was a tench. Yeah. That was a savage bite. I was like trying to give it line, but I couldn't. It's done me, mate. Have you seen it? No. Probably because it's a tench, big one as well. It's going to fall off. Please, I want to see what it is. We've got it. That was a solid bit of luck, that was. Hooked a tent, got snagged up in the lilies, but we managed to land it. Onwards, we're done. With three target species captured and a bonus gudgeon, we had just enough time to check in on the young lads fishing the lake before Cal and I jumped in the van after a successful start to the challenge. Oh, actually, I was supposed to be taking them off as we go. Yeah, you were. Super. Oh, don't forget. <gasps> Gudgeon! Uh, Did I forget to put it on? Oh, yes. Gudgeon. Right, let's hurry to the next vacation. Those crisps were quite spicy. <laughs> spicy! I mean, they, they're my mouth stingling. Black pepper. That's spicy, is it? I, I eat korma when I go to the Indian. Oh, that's not even a spice level. Um, by the way, good news. Uh, the, the guy who was going to be taking us uh, salmon fishing has said he's almost 100% we can do it. Oh, nice. Mm. That's actually really good. Yeah. Oh no, Lake One. I saw a sign. Don't mm. say it was closed. That looked dodgy. <gasps> Lake One closed, 17th of August. What's it today? 15th! <laughs> This new location would give us a good chance of ticking off some of the more common species in the area, like roach, rudd, and maybe even a catfish. But first, I was to go after a fish so fierce, even Jeremy Wade won't touch them. The bream. 
tactics down at this pond are going to be a method feeder and a short hook length with some maggots. I might try sweet corn or a pellet to get through to the bream, but wouldn't mind a roach to be honest at this stage or a rud. That ground bait a good squeeze and we'll throw it out by those reeds out there, it looks good. I've also baited up underneath the tree down there. I'm gonna try float fishing down there if the feeder fishing doesn't work out too well. Oh, you're getting, you're, yeah, you're getting, oh, that's, that's a bite, that's, that's definitely a bite. Of course, it was just as I was walking down to do the other rod. What's it gonna be? That was a bream. Seriously, it was a bream on the end and then it just fell off as I was reeling it in. So the rod's going straight back out. We've just got to keep trying. Yeah, Carl, Carl, Carl. And again, what's it going to be? Be a bream, be a bream, be a bream, please, pretty please. It is, it's a bream. I don't quite know what that reaction was. The heat's getting to my head. I'm losing the plot. Becoming a little frustrated, I quickly recast. I just wanted a bream in my net so we could move on to the big, exciting species. Fish on. Oh, that's strong. Come on, what are you? Oh, I think it might have been that koi. Oh, no way. A koi just swam away from the, the reeds then. Things are not going to plan right now. For whatever reason, I was struggling and I knew it was time to do something a little different. So with a handful of maggots offered to the spot underneath the tree, I switched to my float rod and carefully lowered it into position, praying for a quick bite. The lake answered, but not with any of the species listed in my book, not even a real fish. Crayfish, what is going on? I cannot catch a normal fish out of this flipping lake. Ah, he got me good. Ah, let go, let go, please. Please, I'll just, just, oh, he's got me on both fingers. Let go. That is not a lot of fun. Pure evil. You know what I'm gonna do though, to avoid them, just go a bit shallower. Because I think the, cray, what, the crayfish will definitely be down on the bottom. That's a fish, that's definitely not a crayfish. It seemed like my luck had changed with a roach on the hook and a rod as well, but I wasn't giving up on my dream of a bream. Yeah. You won't ever see me celebrate a bream like that ever again. Voila, we have a bream. Oh, bye. Today I finally achieved my goal of landing the gracious, impressive, powerful, other world. All right, well, let's just go to the next lake, mate. Come on. Catfish. Seriously though, I was relieved to have now got the bream out the way as it meant I could focus on the bigger challenges ahead, including species I haven't targeted in years. It's a little bit out of my throwing range actually. You've got, you've got the catapult. We've got some big hooks now. Look at the size of that. Just putting the catfish rig together. This means big hook and thick, strong braid that the catfish can't wear through with their abrasive pads. They don't really have teeth, so thick, strong braid should do the trick, I hope. Did that get stuck in the branches on the island or did that go in right? I think that was just a banging cast, mate. I'll take that. Now, I'm not sure how long we'll be waiting for this one, but cats aren't always easy. That's a bit better. Oh! I only just cast it. That giant pellet has been taken. I, I assume by a catfish. I mean, it's unlikely to get eaten by a carp. Oh, look at it go. It's got to be a cat. It's got to be. Pulling like this, and charging up and down the place. Ooh, look at it go. Come on, get in the net, you big slimy slug. Yes. What? on earth is that? that? Catfish are so mad. You've done it though. That was easy. <laughs> Look at that head. 
things aren't going bad, we've caught all of the species that we've tried to catch so far, and next up is something a little more difficult. I've never actually fished for eels, so I'm quite keen to get onto the next location, get set up, and start tying some eel fishing rigs, because it's all gonna be things that I've never set up before. At 12 acres in size, with depths down to 35 feet, the old estate lake was sure to hold eels. That'll be my eel net at some point tonight, I hope. <laughs> we're just getting comfortable because we're probably going to be doing the night here. I think, or at least from my, my experiences, eels tend to be quite nocturnal. They feed best during the hours of darkness. And although I've never caught an eel from here, I feel most confident of getting one once it's dark. To catch them, I'd set up a short wire trace connecting a small hook to a free running rig, giving me the best chance of an indication if an eel took the bait. Unsure of what was to come, I cast out the two rods with dead baits before setting up my third and final trap. Cool. Well, we'll get a worm out there, and then we've got worm, little roach head, and also just a chunk of fish. Around each rod I deposited a few handfuls of maggots. Perhaps this would draw in bait fish and in turn scavenging eels. What's up Carl? I forgot the saucepan. Just what I was looking for. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Did you order a saucepan off of Amazon? Yes, I did, mate. I'm your delivery man. Oh, cheers, bud. Is that all? Yeah. Oh, Let me lovely. just take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See ya. <laughs> so you've just rested the rods. Rested the swim, yeah. Rested the swim. That's a bike. Is it? No way. What, nothing. I just struck oh, and felt nothing. No. We are getting so many nibbles. I know that eels can be quite shy biters, and I think maybe I struck a bit early, but we're getting bites, so it's a good sign. Earlier on today, caught some more species, which I'm going to tick off now. We had bream, roach, rud, and very quickly, we also had a Wells catfish. And I thought that was going to be a bigger challenge than it was. So we are actually flying ahead. I think we've almost caught half the species on the list. However, you could say they were the easier half. And the rest of the species are going to be a lot more difficult. <laughs> oh, oh, look at it, look at it. It's, it's dead tight. It's pulled right up. Mate, what is going on? I think it's got to be eels. There's no way there's pike out there messing with my dead baits like this. No, they would have it. Yeah. We've got something. Yeah? Oh, it's an eel. It's an eel. <gasps> it's an eel. <gasps> yes, is it? Yes, it is. <gasps> oh, I can't get that in the net. <laughs> Whoa, ow. <laughs> You're right there, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's in. It's in. You've it's got in. it. Yeah, it's in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Come on! I've the the bobbins like all night just beep 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 beep. Now I found myself. Yeah, how did you manage that? In a bush. <laughs> it's a steep. Oh, you've actually gone wrong. Oh. On, on, biggin, on, biggin. 
<gasps> Mate, this is biting. Oh, there's another eel. No. No? I, I can't actually see it. No, that's an eel. Yeah, that's an eel. <laughs> Mate, we got one in there and the other one's gone. Why couldn't I land them? I, I wasn't hooking into them earlier. Oh, that one's a bit bigger, Cal. Oh, that's a lot bigger. <laughs> After many hours of uneventfulness, it's all kicked off. And there's two eels in there now. You can't get any better than that, can you? I don't know, we could be at home. <laughs> that's so weird. I don't <laughs> like it. I just not really like it. I mean, I'm happy. But... Oh, look, look how chilled it is. It won't be that chilled when I'm trying to hold it. Oh no. There we go. I got an eel. Or has the eel got me? There is the, the larger of the two. <laughs> I don't like it looking at me like that. Don't look at me like that. I'm gonna put it back. That's eel done. Lovely. And seeing as it is now the early hours of the morning, we might as well get up and go fishing at the next location. I think we really need to catch some carp. You know, you said get up. I haven't, I haven't gone to bed. <laughs> yeah, this is a good point. I've, all I've heard is the alarm beeping <laughs> throughout I, the night. And they're hopefully going to beep some more when we get to the, the carp lake next. I don't identify as tired. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to identify as? A raging eel fishing lunatic. Nice. Just a few hours ago, I was casting out chunks of fish and bunches of worms, and now we've got boilies. That was a mission. Mm. <laughs> I'm yawning now. Very much ready for bed. Good night, mate. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I meant today. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Other than moving swims, and lakes in the early hours of the morning. It was quite a quiet night. I've had a bite now, although it seems we've got me stuck in the lily pads. Common, unsurprisingly, given that there's about a million commons in here and only a handful of mirrors. We've got a carp, although in the book there are commons and mirrors. Mirrors in here though, are a lot harder to come by and catching one off the bottom you know, with the rods we've been using last night is going to be very unlikely so i think i'm going to put my waders on walk around the lake and try and stalk them with bread Ooh. come on please where did he go with just one mirror carp circling the area my chances were low I made around 10 casts to it before the heavens well and truly opened and the rain put an end to my surface fishing chances. That was dreadful. Do a multi-species challenge, they said. It'll be fun. Oh, they said. As I loaded the van, I remembered a pond I'd visited years ago. Perhaps it still held the mirror cart we needed. Do you know where I'm taking you now? Not a clue. I've never been here before. No, we're going to play cricket. Oh, the world's most boring sport. We've got something far more exciting to do, and that is fishing on the village pond. We need that mirror. Badly. Oh, this is beautiful. It's probably the best location I've ever been to. Especially that bottle in the water there, that good ambiance. First cast brought an instant bite. Mate, that looks like it's come straight out of someone's pond. Round goldfish. 
<laughs> I think I need to make a video here one day. That's it. Wow. He's a cutie. Wicked. Yes. We're out of this place. And I'm never coming back. Next up, we visited a small river close to home, somewhere Alex and I did a lot of our early fishing whilst we were growing up. My PB chub, and I beat my brother's PB chub as well. <laughs> Knowing the stretch well meant I caught a dace very quickly, but I was amazed at just how fast the fishing turned off after catching it. We moved to another swim further downstream, using a small maggot feeder, but only managed a small minnow before needing to move on. Guys, don't panic. But it's a minnow. <laughs> With Rod safely back in the van and Cal catching up on some well needed sleep, we began our first real bit of driving with a three hour trip to Hampshire, the land of trout, grayling, and the chalk streams they live within. Waiting for a call from a friend of mine who knew the area, we found a spot that looked interesting and put a rod out, welcoming anything that might take a worm. Oh my god. Fish on. Fish on, that's not bad either. Oh, 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 Cal. Oh, wow. Oh, no, and now it's been taken by something else. No, I had a perch, and now the perch has been taken by a pike. If we land this, Cal, then that is another species. There he is, there he is. I'm getting you. Oh, no, it's gone underneath my net. <laughs> Flipping it, this is carnage. Got him. Nice. Yes. And that is another species ticked off the list. That means we can get three more whilst we're down here in Hampshire. And then it's the difficult ones oh. up north. Trout and grayling are not two of my usual targets when fishing. And so I was struggling to get access to somewhere that actually held them. Thankfully, my mate Michael was in the area and pointed me in the direction of a little stream that might just produce both for us. By the time we arrived, the sun had already set. With the last of the light fading quickly, I carefully lowered myself into the water and began to run the float downstream. Oh, yeah, yeah, fish on. Doesn't feel tiny. Please be a grayling, that would be an absolute no, trout. Still though, I haven't caught a trout yet. It's a beautiful brownie. We are ticking off the species today. Right, grayling. The day was slipping away and I had minutes before I'd no longer be able to see my float. That bit looks nice. <laughs> Come on. Fish on. Beer grayling. It's heavier than the other fish. Trout are known to jump when hooked, but this fish was holding deep. It's not jumping. I think it might be. No, it is. It's a grayling, it's a grayling, it's a grayling. This was going to be the hardest one for a while until we go for salmon. Oh, damn. Yes! It's a big one as well. It's probably my biggest ever grayling. Oh, sorry, Cal. I just dropped my rod on your head. Oh, yes. Look at that incredible creature. What an absolute beauty. It was so worth coming down here for the last bit of light. Ah, oh, yes. I'm gonna sleep really, really good tonight. That is, we are doing a lot better in this challenge than I thought, and the grayling, that's definitely my highlight so far. Not the eel fishing. Not the eel fishing. <laughs> we retired to Michael's house where I received a text that Roger, the man who had helped me start fishing, was still in hospital and in a bad way. I went to sleep that night with him very much on my mind. I awoke to a hello from Michael's dog and a bite from his hamster before ticking off a rainbow trout caught from a tiny stream located in the bottom of Michael's garden. Yep. That's a rainbow. It's probably one of the least legitimate places I've ever fished and I can't say I'm proud of it. However, everybody needs a cheat code and this was my cheat. <laughs> Maybe questionable whether or not this one counts, but it's a rainbow trout and it's time to hit the road. We have got the grayling, the pike, which was very exciting, the rainbow trout, and the brown trout. That feels good. There's a lot of ticks there now. With a surprisingly good amount of sleep in our systems, we made our way further north along the M40 with a quick stop to grab a healthy breakfast 
at a local independent food retailer we found. Here you go, sir. Cheesy bacon flat oh, bed for the boy. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Very complimentary straw. Boom. A hash yellow. A hash yellow? Oh, they're not brown, are they? We were heading to the East Midlands to track down the next species we needed, the infamous Sander, a non-native fish originally from mainland Europe that has slowly but surely made its way into this country, thriving in the slow-paced, coloured waters of the UK's canal network. With my lure rod in hand, I cast out and reeled in what must have been hundreds of times over a four-hour period working multiple stretches of canal to try and earn a bite, but it was proving to be more than just a little difficult. Genuinely, that rod tip just smacked. Did it? Yeah. I mean, I'm getting excited, but it's probably just a little perch or something, or a jack pike, but 100%, that just suddenly just whacked. For whatever reason, I just wasn't finding them. Despite having read online that they were plentiful in these waters, utterly confused, I put in a call to some friends who knew the area trying to understand where I was going wrong. Let me tell you guys, right, in the past 12 months, me and Tom haven't even caught a zander. We really struggle. Oh, in, the past 12, in the past 12 months? In May, we've tried about three or four times. And then we had a whole video about catching illegal fish, like half filmed, and we, but we just couldn't catch a bloody zander. Oh. Wait, so you're telling me you haven't caught a zander for 12 months? I'm telling you, we have not caught a zander for 12 months. <laughs> And we've got to catch one in the next few hours of this challenge. It's not impossible. Canal fishing's quite interesting. Fishing for Xander still, with small lures. There's boats going everywhere. I don't know what's going on over there. And we're on a beautiful, is that the right word? Bit of canal which seems to not have any Xander in it currently. That's the lure I'm using. A little soft plastic and a five gram jig head. But it's not working. <laughs> we'll go back to the van, get some dead bait rods, oh, and we're just gonna. I'm in. Are you serious? First cast, mate. Are you joking me? <laughs> that is the funniest thing. Are you joking me? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> this is Xander. That's my first ever Xander, mate. I don't believe it. Um, honestly, that is hilarious. That is amazing. First cast. Cal catching the Xander had really got us out of trouble, and so we headed further north to catch two of my favourite species, chub and barbel. Oh no. Is that weed going down the river? Oh, there's loads of duckweed. The surface is covered in weeds, and there's big clumps of weed floating down the river as well. Don't know why, it must be because we've had some heavy rain or something, and it's flushed it all into the river, but this is going to make things very difficult to control the bait and keep it in position. This one shot, lump of worms. Oh, look at that though. That was good. That was good. That weed. I think I just had a lump of weed go through the line. Weed on. I think this is going to be the story of our afternoon. Whilst I knew this river was packed with the target species, drifting weeds were making presentation of my bait impossible. I needed to find slower water or somewhere without this debris coming downstream. Beer chub, beer chub, beer chub. No. <laughs> it's a perch. Probably a better perch than what we caught earlier on in the, in, in the challenge. But when you're after the chub, even a beautiful perch like that a bit disappointing. Where are the chub gonna be? I'm sure I had a little twitch then. I think if the chub isn't there, the chub's like... Oh. Just spotted a barbel underneath the tree. Its tail just waved out underneath there and then I can't cast to its head from here. I'd be landing it behind its tail. I'm gonna try and get into that tree. Through there, can I? No, that's impossible. 
Oh dear, I can't put my rig through that. It's, I can't actually get to where that... How do I cast that in front of that bar? I don't know if this is going to work now, but that is a beautiful barbel that we just saw down there. I've gone for a long hook bait, so hopefully the lead lands underneath the tree, but then the worm goes further. Down. Yeah. Each and every time I cast out, weeds collected instantly on my line, dragging the bait out of position. And then keep plopping those maggots down. And then keep getting into weed. It's jiggling. Oh, there's a perch. There's a roach. Oh, why not? <laughs> oh, is it? There's a nice roach. Damn it. <laughs> it's working though. Well, we managed to get the bait underneath the tree and a fish actually took it, which means Barbel might take it next, maybe. That was really, really difficult. And I think we're gonna have to give up on this stretch. Maybe have another look at a, a different bit of river and then drive up to Newcastle for salmon. This chub and barbel fishing really has challenged us. And we're gonna have to revisit it after the salmon fishing tomorrow. That said, I did have one last trick up my sleeve. I gave a quick call to a friend of mine, Chris, and explained my difficulties trying to catch a chub or barbel throughout the day. He was willing to meet up and show me a couple of spots, with the advice of switching my bait and tactics to floating bread. After throwing in a few pieces at the new spot, a shoal of chub quickly started taking the bait. I jumped straight into the shallow river and floated a piece downstream which was met by a small chub that would save the day. However, with the light fading, there was no time to celebrate. We had to move on. We still needed that all-important barbel to give us a chance of completing the challenge. Lovely. Beautiful. Oh, we're staying in position for more than a second. Fish, 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 fish. Good fish, good fish. Oh, it's a barbel. Oh, oh. it's a barbel. It snagged me, it snagged me. I'm in that snag. What are these things? Oh, it's stripping line, man. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's come off. No, it hasn't. He's there, he's there, he's there. Oh, he's a barbel. <gasps> On my phone. Oh, it's fine, it's not too deep. Oh, this is like four pound line though. Oh, Chris, Chris, you would not believe my heart, my heart rate right now. This barbel has been so difficult today. This is my chub rod. Did you just scoop him? I damn did look at him as well. Oh, and it's not small either. <laughs> and my phone is definitely very damp, Cal, so. Can you catch? Yeah. I would have said at least seven. Look how thick it is. Can you believe what just happened? Can no. you really believe it? That was so intense. This man. is why you never give up. You just keep casting and then you phone a friend and then, and then you your call. friend sorts you out and puts you on a spot that's not rubbish. Can you tell that I'm happy? <laughs> oh, and it's not a small one either. This is the highlight of my whole multi-species trip. I mean, the eels were obviously wonderful, but this is way better. Look at that. Beautiful barbel. Massive, massive thanks to Chris. Go subscribe to Ginger Fisherman because his YouTube channel is awesome and he's saved our life today. Well, not quite, but you get the point. Oh, he's so cool. Catching that barbel gave me a feeling deep down that we might just pull this off. By the time we got on the road, it was getting late, so we made a quick stop to fuel both the van and ourselves before enduring the long drive north to Newcastle and the River Tyne. Arriving some time in the early hours of the morning and super low on energy, we needed something of a night's sleep, and so Cal and I started searching for a hotel with room for two tired, smelly anglers for what was left of the night. Uh, hi, we were just wondering if there's any rooms for tonight. No, unfortunately, I'm fully booked. Damn. Um, do you know any hotels nearby? 
Um, the bit, come on, baby. You'd have to Google him and watch I'm not from around here. Oh, it was uh -huh. so intense. I'm like, he's gonna lose it. He's gonna lose it. He's gonna Honestly, lose it. I could have got snapped up. Shut. No. <laughs> Please let us in. Oh well. Looks like we're sleeping in a car park somewhere tonight. Hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> a welly. I was about I was about to put itch relief relief cream on my toothbrush. Oh no, that's bad. That was my camera. It just fell. Oh, no. That was a good night next to a um, railway track and a, a relatively busy road. Good sleep. What have we got there, Cal? Oh. <laughs> You've decided that today is the day which they need to go on. Mate, this is the time we need these socks. Have you worn the socks during the trip so far? Never. They are so oh, fresh. <laughs> We're going for salmon and sea trout, probably the hardest species of the entire trip. Definitely so, the yeah. hardest. Exactly. So these are locked and loaded. <laughs> James should be meeting us soon. He's the salmon fisherman expert. It feels good to tick off Barbel. <laughs> Very good, and it was it was a specimen too. Like that was bigger than I could have ever hoped for. We were happy with you know roach, little carp. I mean, all the fish so far have been pretty small. To be honest, your Xander was pathetic, obviously. <laughs> Xander, I will do that, and I'll put in brackets C for Callan. <laughs> and now today we're just going to smash out sea trout and salmon. Probably take a couple of casts. I know they're not difficult. Hey. Welcome back mate, you alright? It's round two. Round two. And this time, it's I, serious. I can't see it being better than last time, but we'll give it a go mate. <laughs> this is the River Tyne, one of the most northern rivers I think in England. We could have driven all the way up to Scotland to target salmon and sea trout, but we decided the Tyne is the best bet for us. And it also meant we could meet up with my old buddy James, who has guided myself and Alex to salmon in the past. But whether or not this place comes good today, that's a different story. I think James is gonna fly fish and I'm gonna fish with a spinner just because I feel more confident with it and I'm more used to the setup and the pressure's really on today and I need to catch. Frickin' heck, that was a bite. I just had a fish on. Salmon fishing takes you to nice places though. Expensive places, but very nice one. Getting little bits of weed on the hook at the moment. It's reminding me of a, a lovely river we fished yesterday, which had quite a lot of weeds as well. Yes, fish on, fish on, fish on. Oh my God. I mean, it's, it's going to be a salmon or a sea trout. You said behind the rock. That's quite a big fish. That's a big fish. Still very calm, you know. I know it is. I freak out. You see where you are, mate. Got a few rocks in front of us. I want to get the rod up high. That's, no, that's big. That's really big. It's a salmon. It's a salmon. It's a bloody salmon, we've been here, mate, half, half an hour. Half an hour! Yes! Oh, is it the hardest part of the challenge. The hardest part of the challenge. This guy, chuck the, he says, he says, throw the spinner behind the boulder. Okay, wallop. Oh boy. With the salmon under our belts, we were truly on a roll. I've known anglers to target salmon for whole seasons without catching one. So the biggest thanks go to James for knowing exactly where and how to fish for them. But the man wasn't done yet. Picking the fly rod up again, he was on a mission to catch one for himself.
Thank you. I'm gonna push the button to get there. Yeah. I felt glad to be on the net, returning the favour. But this time, it wasn't a salmon. Oh, big! It's a banging sea trout. Yeah. Blum and home, mate. Get in. Well done. Well, there's one for summer anyway. Yeah, good job. Good angling. Good like, good. Good. That's a cracking sea trout. Yeah. He's taking that tiny little size 14 dropper. Seeing a sea trout in the flesh gave me a taste of what I needed to catch next. Little did I know what a difficult day lay ahead of me. Got that one on camera, mate. <laughs> oh, I am struggling down here. Hmm. Nice one. Carl, we need a trout desperately. I know, I'm working out here. We've come to a new stretch. James reckons this is top. Um, I, I, I would like to honor you, my lucky fishing socks. I think now, now is the time. It is now the time. Right, come on then. They're a bit, they're a bit wet. Do they smell? Uh, hopefully not. I'm wearing the lucky fishing socks now. We can't fail. You know you're going to get it first cast with those on. I'm getting desperate now. I know, it's getting a bit it's late. It's just getting a little bit concerning. Considering sea trout are supposed to be far more common than salmon, this was becoming frustrating. Right now I'm actually really gutted because the day is slipping away and I still haven't caught the sea trout. It doesn't feel good. We've done so, so well all through this challenge and now sea trout are just proving so difficult. Well, that's it. We tried. We really, really tried. And now it's raining and windy and cold and miserable and we didn't catch the sea trout. Oh gosh. I don't even tell. It's loading. It's taking ages to load the, the Can't drive. even find roads to get there. <laughs> so about eight hours. Eh? Seven and a half hours. Really? Oh, no, you know, it's dropped down to seven hours and 11. Cool. We get there at 4 a.m. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It, it isn't, 4 a.m. <laughs> the sea trout had knocked our confidence and we weren't sure what to do. I'd planned to be sea fishing in Cornwall the next day, but my silly brain didn't consider the enormous drive down the length of the country. Feeling much better now this morning. Grateful of a cozy hotel room and a good bed and a shower. That was great. Due to the painfully long drive and a lack of planning on my behalf, we weren't able to reach the coast on time, so missed our boat fishing opportunity. Cal and I decided to explore a local canal and river, hoping to find a sea trout or perhaps a larger carp than we'd caught previously. But there seemed to be a small problem. Where's the water in the canal? Something doesn't look right here. Something really is looking very, very strange. Oh no, there is. Water. There is water. Why is it so empty? There's no water left in the canal. It's, it, it's inches deep. The ducks can stand in the middle. With our hopes of a canal carp destroyed, we did what any other good angler would do. 
and found the nearest pasty shop to grab some lunch. <laughs> What's your, why's yours got a little, <laughs> little thing? I'm eating the little thing. Mm -mm. We've got to keep our spirits high, somehow. Whilst the river seemed devoid of life, further down the canal we found a slightly deeper section. Imagining that the fish that previously swam freely might be stuck in there, we dropped our rods in and settled down for the night, hoping for a bite in the dark. If we catch a carp, a big monstrous carp tonight, I'll be so happy. We didn't catch anything. It was insult to injury after not catching the sea trout, and we'd also managed to lose the expensive drone somewhere on the journey. So it's fair to say, spirits were now getting pretty low. As I'd still not found someone with a boat we could borrow, the sea fishing was still on hold. So Cal and I decided to visit Angler's Paradise, a sort of heaven for the weary fishermen. Fish. That's a colourful little fella. <laughs> Your turn, Cal. Yeah? Yeah, you're going to get one next. Little baby catfish. Although not bringing us closer to the final three species in the book, a few bites on free line bread were all we needed yes. to put a bend in the rod and smiles on our faces. You going to be all right with that, Cal? Oh. That's why you go to the gym. Whoa, that is a heavy fish. With our spirits lifted and another night in a dodgy car park which wasn't worth filming, we set off for the final leg of our fishing adventure. It was time to swap out fresh for salt water and complete this challenge once and for all. I think there must be a leak in the hull. That's good. Also got engine issues. Good start, boys. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, he's caught it. Stay fans, boys. I think now might be a good time to say... Oh, my phone nearly fell out there. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Don't forget to buy your simple fishing guide book and to complete the challenge yourself. From how to cast your first rod to species-specific information on popular UK species, the Simple Fishing Guidebook is the culmination of all my fishing pursuits wrapped up into one easy-to-read book. If you'd like a copy, it's available now at fishwithcarl.co.uk. <laughs> oh, we've got some ticking to do, actually. What did we do? We did salmon! Woo! Hadn't got a sea trout, though. There's still a chance. There is still a chance. You never know. There might be one swimming around just down there. And now we're after wrasse and bass. We'd met up with a guy called Sam Breeze, who, along with being a professional filmmaker and photographer, is also a really nice guy. He also had a boat, which is always something worth looking for when making new friends. This wasn't my first time sea fishing, but I definitely felt out of my comfort zone, and I would have been a fool to ignore Sam's guidance as we explored the open water in front of us. Having fun there? Yeah, enjoying myself. In the rain. Lovely. Oh, no. oh, oh, I just, oh. oh, they're tiny. What is that? Oh, pollock. pollock. No, I want to catch it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to catch it. I want to catch a bat. Oh, sick! <laughs> Fair play. Fair play for persevering at that. Yeah. That's a new species! Yeah. <laughs> that was a good bit of angling, Cal, I <laughs> like. Whilst Pollock wasn't on the list of targets, it did bring our total species score to 25. My first ever Pollock. As time went on, the waves grew larger and it wasn't long at all before the weather turned from bad to worse. Thinking I'd got snagged on the rocks, I pulled hard, trying to free my lure. It, it felt like it moved at first, but... Oh, it's a fish! It's a fish! Oh, oh that's quite hard. Donkey! Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Oh, where is it? Oh, it's going, so... 
<laughs> He's going some. Oh! Oh! Look at that! Ah! Oh! Whoa! Sliding all over the place. With Ras now ticked off, there was only one species on my mind. Cal and I had both put in so much effort already, braving the weather and the waves, but time was running out, and that chance for the all-important bass seemed nigh on impossible. But if there was anything these last seven days had taught me, it was to keep on. You never know what that next cast might bring. Fish, fish! Oh, oh. God, the bite nearly pulled me off my feet. Ooh! It is! Oh! It is! Slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah, boys! Yes! Oh, wow! The weather was atrocious. We were losing hope. Landing the bass just before midday meant we'd failed the challenge by just one species, the sea trout. Despite not hitting our target, we celebrated with a barbecue, and I felt glad to have shared this memorable trip with Cal. A young man approached us on the beach that evening telling stories of his fishing adventures and explained that my videos had helped him. I smiled and thought of Roger. I wish he could have seen this video. I guess I'll keep doing my best to inspire and encourage others, just like he did for me.